Qualcomm just announced the Snapdragon 630 and 660 mobile platforms. Oh yeah, they're calling them mobile platforms now and not SOCs anymore. So anyway, in this video, let's take a look at that. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get to it. So let's start with the Snapdragon 660. This has been a long time coming. For a while now, we, the end consumers, and even the brands have been confused since Qualcomm's lineup has been a little convoluted. The Snapdragon 652 or 653 is the most powerful non-8 series chip from Qualcomm, but they are built on the older 28 nanometer manufacturing process. The 625, on the other hand, is much more power efficient being manufactured on the 14 nanometer FinFET process and it's newer. So while some brands went with 653 on their top mid-rangers, Others went with 625 and even now, opinions are divided on which chip would someone prefer on say a Samsung phone priced at 30,000 rupees. Well, you know what, let's put that to the test. Here's a poll, let's see where this goes. Anyway, coming back to the video at hand, with the announcement of the 660 and the 630, the lines have gotten a lot clearer. So the 660 is a follow-up to the Snapdragon 652, 653. It's a 64-bit octa-core configuration, just like the 652-53, but instead of 4A72 and 4A53 cores found there, Qualcomm's using two sets of their own Cryo 260 cores. One will be clocked at 2.2 GHz, while the other at 1.8 GHz. Qualcomm states this should provide a 20% boost in CPU performance over the 653. At the same time, it would also manage to be a lot more power efficient. That's good news. What's better is that the GPU has also gotten an upgrade. Now it's the Adreno 512 from the Adreno 510 and this brings about a 30% boost in GPU performance or at least Qualcomm claims it. And there's support for Vulkan API also. Uh, an XL, X12 LTE modems press end doubling the supported uh, download speeds on LTE. Bluetooth 5 for faster Bluetooth performance, improved range, and also other fun features like outputting to two Bluetooth devices at once. Again, this one, Samsung did implement it on the S8. Not sure if other brands will, but if they choose to, or if it becomes a part of Android, the hardware to support it will be there. Then there's support for quick charge for compliance, support for USB 3.1 Type-C, and others like the Hexagon 680 DSP and an improved Spectra 160 ISP with EIS 3.0. So what do all this mean? What they mean is that even mid-rangers will have support for flagship features like dual camera uh, with features like uh, electronic image stabilization 3.0, optical zoom and so on. Now these, the X12, X12 LTE modem, Bluetooth 5, Quick Charge 4, etc. are also present with the new Snapdragon 630. There are some minor differences. Well, the 660 can support dual 16 megapixel cameras, the 630 can only support dual 13 megapixel sensors. The 660 is also capable of outputting 4K to an external display and there's support and can support up to Quad HD displays, while the 630 can only support up to Full HD resolutions. By the way, both chips can support up to 8 gigs of RAM. Anyway, the 630 is kind of a smaller upgrade and that's understandable given that the 626 is a lot more recent than the 653. Here Qualcomm's retain the same two sets of A53 cores. Even the clock speeds remain the same from the 626, 2.2 and 1.8 GHz respectively. The GPU though does change at Reno 508 instead of 506. And again, Qualcomm's promise that this will bring about a 30% boost in GPU performance. Snapdragon 630 also brings support for dual channel TDR4 RAM. Uh, 660 is already available to device manufacturers, so we might be seeing devices launch with 660 anytime soon. If I can recall correctly, the Redmi Pro 2 is rumored to be coming with a Snapdragon 660 chip, uh, whereas the 630 will be made available to manufacturers at the end of this month, so we can expect devices with 630 to come out next quarter maybe. 
So anyway guys, that's it. All you need to know about the Snapdragon 630 and 660 mobile platforms that Qualcomm announced. I'm glad to see Qualcomm bring a lot of high-end flagship features to the mid and lower mid-range phones. I can't wait to see where brands like Xiaomi and Lenovo go with this. Let me know if you did find this video useful. If you hated it, go ahead, feel free to vote it down. But if you did like it, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. If you have already subscribed, hit that bell icon to make sure you get notified each time a new video goes live here on C4 Retech. So that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4 Retech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.